Back in 1889, Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th President of the United States, shared an intriguing story in his book, The Wilderness Hunter. Known for his outdoor expertise, Roosevelt recounted a tale told to him by an old mountain trapper named Bauman. This particular story stuck with Roosevelt, as it was the only one of its kind in the book. Bauman's narrative piqued Roosevelt's interest, and it may captivate you as well. Bauman, a seasoned frontiersman, was not typically superstitious. However, one story recounted by Bauman caught Roosevelt's full attention. Bauman, with his German ancestry and exposure to various folklore, shared a chilling account that Roosevelt believed in earnest, evident in how Roosevelt hesitated and shuddered at crucial points in the tale. The story unfolded when Bauman, still a young man, was trapping in a rugged mountain pass with his partner. Despite the pass's ominous past where a solitary hunter had met a gruesome end the year before, Bauman and his companion boldly ventured into the area in search of beavers. Setting up camp in a small glade near a stream, they soon realized they were not alone in the wilderness. Returning to camp at dusk, the trappers discovered signs of a visitor. A bear had ransacked their belongings and demolished their shelter. Intriguingly, their visitor's footprints seemed oddly human-like, a detail that unsettled both men. As night fell, an eerie event unfolded when a mysterious creature lurked near their camp, emitting a wild beast odor. Startled, Bauman fired at the shadowy figure but missed. The unseen creature retreated into the darkness, leaving the trappers on edge through the night but relatively unharmed. The following day, as they gathered their traps, a sense of unease lingered. Bauman's partner headed back to camp while Bauman remained to collect the final beaver traps. Upon his return, Bauman encountered a scene of horror. His friend lay lifeless, his neck broken, and four wound marks on his throat. Deep footprints surrounding the camp hinted at a large bipedal intruder, sparking fear and confusion in Bauman. After discovering his partner's lifeless body with terrible injuries, Bauman's rational mind was engulfed by a primal fear, sensing a malevolent force at play in the desolate wilderness. The deep footprints surrounding the camp where the attack happened, coupled with the uncanny human-like tracks observed earlier, fueled his growing dread of being hunted by this unseen apex predator. Instinctively grabbing his trusty rifle, Bauman made a swift decision to escape the valley, driven by a primal survival urge. His flight on horseback was hasty, leaving behind their camp, provisions, beaver hides, and most possessions in a bid to outrun the unseen threat haunting the rugged terrain. The gravity of the experience left Bauman in a state of deep shock and disbelief, grappling with the realization that he had encountered something far more sinister than any known predator in the wild. The overwhelming sense of facing an otherworldly presence, one that defied logical explanation, plagued his thoughts as he sought safety in distant horizons, his mind haunted by the shadows of the malevolent entity that lurked amidst the untamed wilderness. Roosevelt, in documenting Bauman's tale, noted eerie parallels with present-day accounts of Sasquatch sightings. The bipedal footprints, pungent odor, and brutal attack on Bauman's partner mirrored modern-day encounters with the legendary creature. Despite attempts to rationalize the events as the work of a cunning wild beast, Roosevelt acknowledged the lingering mystery shrouding Bauman's ordeal. The tale of Bauman's terrifying encounter serves as a reminder of the untamed wilderness and the mysteries that dwell within. Whether it was a real-life monster or an unknown creature, the narrative remains a chilling testament to the dangers that lurk in the wild unknown. In September 2007, Kevin, an experienced outdoorsman and passionate hunter, delved into meticulous preparations for a hunting expedition in the expansive wilderness of Labaca County, Texas, located in the southern region near Victoria. Delving into his passion for hunting, he meticulously orchestrated the setup of feeders across the vast expanse of 300 acres, characterized by a diverse terrain of pasture land interspersed with majestic oak trees and dense scrub oak thickets. 
Fueled by the thrill of exploration, Kevin navigated the rugged landscape with purpose, strategically placing apple blocks and feeders to attract game, particularly mindful of the prevalent hog population in the area. Against the backdrop of a scorching Texas afternoon, Kevin's reverent engagement with the natural environment unfolded seamlessly as he adeptly maneuvered through the terrain, his keen senses attuned to the nuances of the wild. As he crouched down to inspect the game trails, the tranquil atmosphere was abruptly shattered by a startling burst of sound. The jolt of surprise prompted him to swiftly draw his pistol, his senses hyper-focused on the source of the disturbance. To his astonishment, he caught sight of a massive figure moving swiftly on two legs across the landscape. The creature's agile movements defied conventional norms, covering the terrain with effortless speed before seamlessly transitioning to all fours as it vanished into the dense brush at the periphery. The sheer force and fluidity of its motion left Kevin awestruck, likening its presence to a behemoth, akin to a Mack truck barreling through the undergrowth. After the intense encounter, he embarked on a thorough investigation to seek tangible evidence that could validate his unnerving experience. Despite his diligent efforts, he failed to uncover any physical traces of the creature's presence, leaving him with a sense of bewilderment and a lingering unease. The absence of concrete proof did little to diminish the impact of the encounter on Kevin's psyche, as the vivid memory of the creature's imposing presence continued to haunt him. Struggling to make sense of the event, Kevin grappled with conflicting emotions and tried to rationalize the encounter within the confines of his known reality. However, the overwhelming impressions of the creature's large, bipedal form and powerful movements left an indelible mark on his consciousness, leading him to tentatively accept that he had encountered an enigmatic, ape-like being beyond his comprehension. Seeking solace and understanding, Kevin opened up to his close circle of friends and family members, recounting the chilling details of his encounter with the unknown entity. In sharing his story, he found empathy and support from others who had also faced unexplained phenomena in the wilderness, fostering a sense of communal acknowledgement of the mysterious occurrences that often lurk beyond human understanding. In the years that followed, he mustered the courage to revisit the hunting grounds that had once been the setting for his inexplicable encounter. However, his return was met with a series of perplexing events, including the inexplicable destruction of his carefully placed feeders. These strange occurrences served as stark reminders of the enigmatic forces that dwelled within the wild expanse, prompting him to reassess his approach to venturing alone into the untamed wilderness. Subsequent outings alongside trusted companions only reinforced his unwavering commitment to avoid solo hunting expeditions and instead prioritize the safety of collective exploration in the vast expanses of nature. The shared experiences with friends underscored the importance of camaraderie and vigilance in navigating the unpredictable landscapes that harbored unknown entities and elusive mysteries. As he contemplated his profound encounter, and the subsequent twists of fate that had unfolded in the wilderness, he found himself embracing the notion of undiscovered ape species inhabiting the remote corners of the natural world. With a newfound perspective on the intricate balance between human presence and the uncharted realms of wilderness, Kevin emphasized the imperative of arming oneself with preparedness and vigilance when delving into the unknown territories where these entities may tread. Through his evolving beliefs and experiences, he emerged as a steadfast advocate for cautious exploration and mutual respect between man and the mysterious denizens of the wild. Mike, a 65-year-old seasoned outdoorsman and experienced hunter, shared his chilling encounters with mysterious beings resembling Bigfoot. His first encounter occurred in the early 1970s while deer hunting deep in the woods of northern Minnesota. As he sat in his tree stand, Mike heard a peculiar chirping noise approaching. Initially resembling the melodic call of a bird, a subtle fault in the voice gave away that the noise was made by something else, unnaturally blending a bird-like tone with an eerie quality. Suddenly, a massive figure emerged, resembling a man but with prehistoric features. 
The creature, about seven feet tall and exuded a pungent odor as it curiously glanced around. Startled, Mike vocalized to the creature to grab its attention. In a swift and almost ghostly manner, the creature turned to look directly at him before vanishing into the dense forest, leaving him with a lingering sense of disbelief and intrigue. The sighting left Mike baffled and intrigued, prompting him to delve into the realm of Bigfoot research. He described the creature he saw as more man-like than ape, with distinct human facial features. His second encounter years later unfolded near his quaint cabin situated on a picturesque lakeshore, surrounded by tranquil waters reflecting the hues of the sky. It was here that Mike bore witness to a dark, mysterious figure swiftly gliding along the glistening shoreline. Despite the considerable distance that separated them, Mike's keen observations allowed him to estimate the creature's imposing height at approximately 7 to 7.5 feet, strikingly reminiscent of his initial encounter. The creature's agile movements, coupled with its mysterious disappearances into the natural tapestry of the landscape, further fueled Mike's unwavering curiosity and deepened his resolve to unravel the mystery surrounding these elusive entities. In his final encounter during a conservation expedition deep in the heart of the wilderness, Mike and his intrepid team stumbled upon compelling evidence of Bigfoot activity, sending shivers down their spines. The air crackled with tension as they encountered a spine-chilling bluff charge, where a dark figure emerged and charged them shaking trees and branches between the quivering brush, setting their hearts pounding with a mixture of fear and fascination. The vocalizations of the creature resonated through the dense forest, stunning the group of men as they stood paralyzed, sending a primal chill down their spines, the roars of the behemoth Sasquatch echoing through the ancient trees. Despite the creature's abrupt vanishing act, leaving only an eerie silence in its wake, the subtle yet unmistakable signs and the lingering sense of awe confirmed to Mike the undeniable truth of a brush with the unknown, a realm beyond mere mortal comprehension. As the final chapter of Mike's riveting encounters unfolded, a tapestry of inexplicable events unraveled, leaving an indelible mark on his psyche. From unexplained illnesses after the encounters to profound feelings of deep unease, hints of infrasound manipulation peppered his experiences hinting at the otherworldly abilities of the elusive Bigfoot entities. These haunting encounters, woven intricately with ongoing research and tireless investigations, served to illuminate the mysterious existence of these elusive beings, casting a shadow of mystery and intrigue over the wilderness that had once been familiar to him. Each encounter kindled a profound curiosity in Mike, igniting a deep-seated respect for the ancient secrets shrouded within the depths of the forest, a testament to the enduring enigma of the uncharted wilds.